Uh, good evening, dear professors and doctors. It is an honor to welcome each and every one of you to the Department of Ophthalmology, Universitas Indonesia, and Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine's remotely resident case presentation. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sita Paramita, and I will be the moderator in this session. And uh, our topic today is about leukocoria. Uh, as we know, leukocoria means white pupil or cat's eye pupil. And it is often the first sign of a range of serious intraocular disorders, of which most are patient threatening and some are life threatening. We come together to explore, discuss, and collaborate on ways to address this issue with compassion and expertise. And we will start with the lecture from Professor Rita Sitoros, PhD, entitled Current Treatment of Retinoblastoma in Cipta Mangkusuma Hospital, Jakarta. Then we'll be continued with the case presentation by Dr. Yugen Shimoda from Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine, entitled Three Cases of Lecocoria. And the last will be a case presentation by Dr. M. Shafiq Advani from Universitas Indonesia, entitled a case series of our approach in managing retinoblastoma. And after all of the presentations, we will discuss with our panelists from Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine, Dr. Sayaka Kamada, and our panelists from Universitas Indonesia, Professor Rita Sitorus, Dr. Julie Dewi Baliana, and Dr. Dian Estri Yulia. Mm -hmm. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's start with a lecture from Professor Rita Sitorus, PhD, entitled Current Treatment of Retinoblastoma in Cipto Mount Kusmo Hospital, Jakarta. Please, Professor Rita, time is yours. Dr. Sita, <coughs> can, you, can you hear my voice clearly? Let yes, me check uh, first. Okay, so greetings from Jakarta. Uh, mm -hmm. Colleagues from University, Kobe University, uh, Kyoto University, uh, Prof. Soto Zono and other friends, colleagues, and also, of course, the residents from the University, uh, Kyoto University, and residents and friends from the University of Indonesia. So today, I would like to share uh, my talk. Uh, can I just share first my uh, slide? Okay, so this is my slide. Is it okay? Can you can you see that? Uh, yes, bro. Yes. So uh, the topic for me today to share is about retinoblastoma, one type, one part of uh, leukocoria, and will be um our talk in 15 minutes, uh, maybe overview in retinoblastoma in general, and then I will come in deep uh, about the current management in our hospital. So uh, I think everybody already familiar with retinoblastoma. It is a common intraocular malignancy in children caused by uh, the mutation of RB1 gene. It could be in hereditary or sporadic. Usually occurred in uh, children below five years old, could be unilateral, bilateral, and it is highly curable in developed country, maybe like in Japan. But in our country, maybe um, it is not, um, it is not, highly uh, curable disease, mostly perhaps in the peripheral uh, lead to um, blindness or even die in some part of our country. Uh, so early diagnosis followed by prompt treatment is very important. You can see here the tumor in <clears throat> located inside of the eyeball. So clinical sign of retinoblastoma, most common is leukocoria, eye pupil, but could also represent as cat's eye, squint eye, inflammation, and on the um, more advanced case could be present 
in Buftalmos or proctotic eye. As you can see here in proctotic eye in uh, children, this represents a more advanced disease. But most common is lipoporia, as um, you can see here in the picture. So how is the diagnosis? The diagnosis could cover history and of course clinical features as we mentioned, I mentioned before, and then could be in help of ultrasound, orbital ultrasound, and imaging like orbital MRI and CT scan. In case of a suspicion of extraocular tumor proctotic eye, it is recommended to <clears throat> assess the LCS liquor cerebri and even bone marrow puncture. Histopathological review could be done if we enucleate the eye and identify the pathological risk factor, be careful but to, because the tumor biopsy is contraindicated intraocular tumor. Maybe in Japan, you also perform genetic analysis, usually in developed country, but not common in our country. So if we talk about the therapy or management of retinoblastoma, of course, we have to understand about the retinal classification, the classification of retinoblastoma. We, we know that there are two classifications. One is if the tumor already or uh, located inside in intraocular tumor, we use this classification, international intraocular retinoblastoma classification. We Classified is in the five group, group A, group B, group C, B, B. It is depend on the uh, size of the tumor and lesion. And group C, B, more uh, bigger. And usually, because there is a seeding of tumor local or reduced. And group E, if the tumor already uh, occupy more than half of the um, fetus capacity. This is classification for intraocular retinoblastoma, intraocular. The other staging, the other classification is staging system. Is we suspect sus suspicion of the tumor already extraocular, stage one, stage zero, one, two, three, four. And um, as you will see here, stage one is two, is I enucleated, but still there is histo history logically a tumor um, complete, but at stage two, if there is a microscopic residual tumor histopathologically, stage three, if the eye already proptotic, stage four, if, the, uh, if there is already metastatic disease, if it is metastasized to um, hematogenous, we state, we, uh, we read it, it is referred to stage four A, and it was already extension to CNS stage 4B. So keep in mind this uh, two classification. So how about the treatment of retinoblastoma? Keep in mind that the treatment of retinoblastoma objective of one, the priority is to save the life, life survival, survival of the patient, and then ocular survival. It could be preservation of the glue, or more than, more than that is preservation of vision. The management is very complex, take in, then tailored to each patient and I. So take into account how about the size, the number, like laterality, condition, metastatic, and systemic status of the patient should be considered in uh, make decision which treatment should be should we choose. So currently available treatment, we have few options, chemotherapy, intravenous, subtenon, intravitreal, chemotherapy, intra-arterial chemotherapy. We will talk about this more in the later uh, slides. Or radiotherapy or focal therapy, laser or cryo, if the tumor of, uh, still uh, inside of a localized in the retina, intraocular, 
or surgical denucleation or extenturation or combined therapy. Most of that, that we have to consider that multidisciplinary experts should be there in managing the retinoblastoma. Just shortly, that what is the difference between retinoblastoma in developing country, less developed country, and in modern developed country? Just a short conclusion that in developed country, the retinoblastoma disease usually highly curable, but in developing country, in the contrary, mostly die. So you can see here in the figure that the high income country. Most of the tumor is intraocular and very few of extraocular. It is in contrast with low income country. Most of the extraocular disease, proptotic eye, and very few interest, and the tumor is still localized intraocular. Um, I would introduce you to the uh, our hospital. If you click the one retinoma, Protein morbosoma work, and then this is RB centers worldwide. And luckily, that our hospital, Chipto Mount Kusuma National Hospital, is there as a one of the RB centers in Indonesia. So, why? Because our hospital is a top referral hospital in Indonesia. Many patients from other uh, sites of uh, archipelago our country referred to us. So maybe I would like to briefly um, share about the each management of retinoblastoma. First is enucleation. Uh, this is look like the enucleation. You have to be careful in doing the surgery. And then after the enucleation, of course, we put eye prosthetic, as you may see here, cosmetically, the eye, the both eye looks good. Even one eye already enucleated. Dr. Sita, can you remind me with the time? How many? Uh, we still have four, four to five minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, another option is cryotherapy. This is just to show you our patient. A bilateral intraocular RB, um, one eye already enucleated, and the fellow eye, we uh, we found a small tumor in the peripheral. Of course, we cannot do a laser therapy for this tumor, peripheral tumor, but we perform cryotherapy. And this is the picture after the cryotherapy given to this uh, small tumor, peripheral tumor. And another case, another case is, a, is a boy aged two years. So um, if the tumor located in a, a posterior pole, yeah, not peripheral, we can put uh, laser therapy, TTP, thermotherapy, usually diet laser. And you can see here the tumor regress and um, we can see the, the scar tumor already inactive. And this combine of uh, TTT, laser and cryotherapy. This is before the before the cryo and TTT, and this is after. Post TTT and cryo, the tumor uh, regress, flat and scars. If if we found a stage three with proptotic eye, this is very um, uh, severe cases. So in the past we do. We perform excentration, but up to now we um, avoid the excentration no longer uh, perform because cosmetically it is not good. So we what we do we first uh, give additional chemotherapy, chemoadjuvant, about three cycles, and then followed by extended enucleation. This is uh, the the eye looks like after the uh, extended enucleation and prosthetic eye. The other option is, is available in our hospital is intravitreal chemotherapy. I don't know how it's in Japan. Uh, this I think I cannot uh, talk about it more deeply because of limited time, but 
this is a lo uh, this is localized indicated that if in case of the views with the seeding, we use Malfoyan or Topoteca. And be careful because after the um, after the injection, we have to put the tall triple freeze tall cryo at the injection site to avoid um, the um, the spreading of the tumor extraocular when we put out the the injection. And recently, more recently, our hospital uh, advanced our capacity in treating retinoblastoma with performing intra-arterial chemotherapy. Is the Chipto Mangun Kusuma Hospital is the first RB center in Indonesia applying this modality. We already have serial cases in twenty uh, in, in this year, and some of them will be discussed. Will be presented by Dr. Shafiq Singh after this. So this IAC actually pioneered by Japanese um, doctor Akihiro Kaneko, which is first in 1990, 1990 um, pioneered targeted chemotherapy to treat the intraoral retinoblastoma. This is complex, costly procedure, not done by the, by the ophthalmologist, by done by experienced neurosurgeon and interventional neuro neuroradiologist. Use melphalan. We have to be careful what is the indication, primary or secondary therapy, and be aware of the complication because it will cause mild and severe um, uh, side effect to the patient. Dr. Safik will talk about it later, and we will have discussion about this. So I think this is end of my slide presentation. This is uh, some of our patients, our RB patient, which is which are survived uh, treat, uh, in uh, uh, with the, our treatment. And on the right side is um, the way I and my daughter spend our holiday. We love Japan very much, Hokkaido. To, to 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 spend the my our holiday in Japan experience in the winter time and snowing in Japan. Arigato gozaimashita. Okay, that's all. I give it my time back to the moderator. Thank you very much, Professor Rita Sitorus, for the inspiring lecture, and we will have a discussion at the end of all presentations. Uh, next, we will continue to the case presentation by Dr. Yugen Shimoda from Kyoto Prefectural uh, University of Medicine, entitled Three Cases of Lecocorea. Please, Dr. Yugen, I is yours. Can you hear my voice? Uh, yes, Dr. Yugen. My voice is clear. I'm, uh, I'm Yugen Shimoda from Kyoto Prefecture University of Medicine. I will present three cases of local Korea. First, I will present a case of congenital cataracts. The patient is a one-year-old boy. His chief complaint is white pupils in both eyes. A one-year-old boy was diagnosed with left leukocoria at nursery school and visited his ophthalmologist. Both congenital cataracts were found and he was referred to our hospital the next day. The leukocoria was not noted until 10 months old. <clears throat> he could follow his eyes and had no status or limitation of eye movement. There is no history of any previous medical history, no apparent problems in utero or at birth or after birth, and no history of pediatric uh, scrutiny. His mother has a history of congenital cataracts and Pierre Lobin syndrome. This is the initial examination. Premature <clears throat> congenital cataracts were observed in both eyes. The anterior chamber was deep, 
there was no nystagmus and tracking was possible. At one year and three months of age, bilateral BA and AV was planned under general, general anesthesia. Intraocular lenses were not inserted and correction with hard contact lenses was planned. On admission the day before surgery, Mild right internal strabismus and nystagmus were noted. The anterior capsule was stained with ICG and CCC was performed. The lens was excised from the ring with a 27 gauge cutter and the lens cortex was aspirated using a bimanual. The lens capsule was also aspirated as much as possible and the Posterior capsule was inserted with the cutter. Anterior vitrectomy was also performed. The length of the ocular axis measured intraoperatory was 24.27 mm in the light eye and 23.95 mm in the left eye. After the surgery, Levofloxacin eye drops four times per day, betamethasone eye drops six times per day, and trocamido and phenylephrine eye drops two times per day were continued. Within one month of the surgery, hard contact lens wearing was started. The reflective power of HCL was aimed at minus three geopters. He is now seven years old and his visual acuity is good with 1.2 corrected visual acuity with hard contact lens wear. He is practicing wearing bifocal glasses. This is a refractive power of HCL. The power of lens reflections required is gradually decreasing. I will present a case of PHPV in an eight-year-old girl. The patient is an eight-month-old girl. Her parents' chief complaint is that they did not see eye to eye with their daughter. She had not had eye contact from birth. Recording in progress. She began to wear a prosthesis on the right eye in order to promote all development. She was also accompanied by general development retardation. She had not yet turned over at eight months. We recommend that she go to a rehabilitation facility for the visually <coughs> impaired children. Jarta. She was examined every six months with sedation, but at the eight years and three months, 
lateral detachment was found in her left eye. This was a tractional <coughs> lateral detach detachment caused by proliferative tissue. Since the detachment had occurred in the better eye, we wondered whether surgery would be a better option. We referred her to one of the most famous hospitals for pediatric, pediatric retinal surgery in Japan. The patient was diagnosed with FEPR and underwent lens resection and vitrectomy, but unfortunately, retinal <coughs> restoration was difficult. After surgery on the left eye, the left eye gradually became an ocular phthisis as well. In addition to her right eye, she started wearing a prosthetic eye for her left eye, the age of three. Currently, the size of the prosthetic eye is being adjusted to accommodate the growth of the orbital bone. And the patient is under observation with no major problems. She will be entering a school for the blind next spring. At last, I will present a case of retinal blastoma in a two years old girl. The chief complaint is estropia. At age two, her parents noticed strabismus and referred her to our hospital. A mass lesion was found in the left eye. There are no apparent problems in utero at birth and or after birth and no history of pediatric scrutiny. One of her maternal grandfather's cousins, a woman, has childhood cancer of the eye, and her maternal grandfather was an atomic bomb survivor. This is the initial examination. Leukoclea was seen in the left eye, and the prominent mass was seen posterior to the lens. A massive intraocular tumor lesion with calcification found in the left eye. An MRI, a mass with a contrast effect, was found in the left eye, which was thought to be retinoblastoma. So, retinoblastoma of the left eye was strongly suspected. The examination of the right eye was normal. The patient was referred to the National Cancer Center in Tokyo, which has many cases of retinal blastoma with conservative treatment. This patient was in international classification group E. Considering the inability to obtain practi practical vision and long-term complications such as systemic treatment, an incubation was recommended for this patient. A control threat was applied to the external ocular muscle. The eye was pulled and dislocated, and the optic nerve was transected. The optic nerve, the optic nerve transection was identified, and an additional four millimeter resection of the optic nerve was performed. The orbit was statically homostatic, and after confirming, there was no bleeding an 80 millimeter prosthetic base was encapsulated. The procedure was completed after encapsulating the prosthetic base with the external ocular muscle, penal sac, and conjunctiva. Intraoperatively, there was no obvious square invasion from the ocular surface and no obvious neoplastic enlargement of the additional resected of nerve was grossly observed. Pathological examination blastoma. Optic nerve traction involvement is negative. Involvement of the lens and its supporting tissues, anterior chamber and Additional testing was performed with bone scintigraphy and bone marrow examination due to the optics <coughs> nerve involvement, but no metastasis was found. 
Since then, the patient has been followed up with con uh, contrast enhanced MRI every six months and is now under observation with no recurrence or metastasis on the other side. These are the cause of leukocoria and its rate. Cataracts were responsive for about 75 of cases. Retinoblastoma is 21%, retinal detachment, and retinopathy of prematurity, and papillary membrane persistence is uh, 1%. BHPV and end of some end of is about uh, 0.64 percent. I summarize congenital cataracts, the most common causes of glycocorea. The etiology of congenital includes both genetic and environmental factors are known to be involved in genital cataracts. Environment factors include maternal infection, such as torch syndrome and metabolic disorders. It is about one to 15 per 1,000 people and is 10 times higher in developing countries than in developed countries. Next, I will discuss the timing of surgery for congen <coughs> congenital cataracts. A literature say between birth and uh, 14 weeks of age, they noted a progressively worse visual outcome. The order a child was at the time of cataract surgery. Visual acuity decreased by one line with each three weeks delay in surgery. So, Surgery for an literal cataract should be performed within the first six weeks of life. And that for <clears throat> bilateral cataracts within eight to 10 weeks of life to prevent development of stimulus depriv deprivation and blowopia. Next, I discuss complications. An aphatic glaucoma rate of approximately 15% can be expected, and the risk decreases if surgery is delayed. Postponing short surgery from the fourth to the eighth week of life reduces the risk of secondary glaucoma by 50%. In IATS randomized study, by the five year old follow up, 20 eyes had developed glaucoma. The contact lens group had nine eyes with glaucoma, and the IOL group had uh, 11 with glaucoma. Visual axis opacity occurred in 67 eyes, typically within the first post operative year. Next, I talk about myopic shift. After IOL implantation during infancy, the rate of myopic shift occurs more, <clears throat> most rapidly during the first one and one half year of life. The mean reflective change at age five years for children six months of age at surgery was 7.22 diopters. In infant aphakia <clears throat> treatment study, the IOL power was calculated based on the holiday one formula targeting an eight diopter under correction for infants four to six weeks of age and uh, six diopters under correction for infants older than six weeks. This is a figure of the distribution of actual lengths for bilateral and unilateral cataract surgery certified by age at surgery. Actual length is in, increased with age, regardless of literary or of cataract surgery. The left, <coughs> the left figure is that intraocular lens implantation for children with unilateral cataract surgery stratified by age at surgery. The percentage of IOL implantation increased with age in children undergoing unilateral surgery. And the life figure is bilateral cataract surgery. 
the percentage of IOL implantation increased with age in children undergoing bilateral surgery too. This is a target reflective error. For uh, 618 months, appear to decrease with age. More hyper, according, according to this report, in terms of visual acuity, one year after cataract surgery, 35% had achieved age normal values. The percentage of minority visual acuity of 0.4 or better was 81% in the bilateral pseudophagic eyes and 52% in the bilateral pseudophagic eyes. In children over three years of age, <clears throat> the mean visual acuity was approximately 0.5 and 0.3 in the unilateral pseudophagic lens eye. Leukoclea uh, often have serious diseases and require early detection and approximate, uh, appropriate treatment. Unilateral disease can cause more severe umbrella, so eye patch treatment is important. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Yugen Shimoda, for the interesting cases. We will proceed to the next case presentation by Dr. M. Shafiq Atfani from Universitas Indonesia, entitled Case Series of Our Approach in Managing Retinoblastoma. Please, Dr. Shafiq, time is yours. Thank you, Dr. Sita, for the opportunity. Uh, please wait a minute, let me share my slide. Okay, good afternoon, professors, fellows, doctors. I cannot say it one by one. I'm Shafiq, currently a pediatric ophthalmology resident from Universitas Indonesia. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And today I would like to present uh, this case regarding the case series of our approach in managing retinoblastoma. The theme in this meeting is Korea, but I would like to focus on retinoblastoma because as have previously mentioned by Profita, uh, in the management in developing countries can be tricky, challenging, and associated with higher mortality rates. So for the first case, um, a girl, one year old, patient was actually referred from Padang with complaint of cat eye sign in her left eye since one month before admission. She was brought to nearby ophthalmologist and was advised to undergo further management with, with suspected of bilateral retroblastoma. Uh, this is the picture of the patient, but unfortunately, the local Korea cannot uh, weak, uh, is not really visible. Uh, the patient complained no other uh, complaints. And for those of you asking for which Padang is from, uh, it is located from 1,000 kilometers away from the capital city of Jakarta. The patient had underwent CT scan and USG, both showing the suspected to retinoblastoma. The CT scan was actually performed from the origin of, of the hospital uh, in Padang. They only conducted the non contrast CT scan, I think because due to limitation of the facility. Uh, the result was showing the isodense lesion with calcification in the, in the left eye. Uh, here we can notice that the calcification, especially in the le left eye, with slight appearance in the posterior right eyeball and no signs of intracranial infiltration or calcification as seen in these images. For the medical history, uh, with normal birth history and for the familial history, it is very interesting that she was really unfortunate because her elder sister, elder sister was uh, passed away due to retinoblastoma complication. She had an intracranial hemorrhage at age one and a half year. She also underwent chemotherapy, but I think it is not successful. 
for the fundoscopy on the initial visit, 6 April 2023, for the right eye fundoscopy, these are the ultrawide photograph of the fundus. We can observe uh, two separated mass. The apex was actually roughly two, uh, sorry, three to four times the peak diameter. While the left eye, it is actually a relatively quite massive tumor that compressed the optic disc and nearly reached the macula. So the diagnosis uh, is a bilateral retinoblastoma, group B of the right eye and group C, D of the left, left eye. We plan for the systemic chemotherapy, six cycles in total, with wide field fundoscopy plus minus uh, laser indirect ophthalmoscope or TTT. And then we also perform secondary IAC, intraarterial chemotherapy of the left eye. Uh, unfortunately, during the chemotherapy process, the patient twice got hospitalized after chemo, one time with sepsis. So the side effects really hit the patient bad. Uh, these are the serial fundoscopy of the image from the right eye. So 6 April is the initial visit, 16 November and the 14 December. So between this span, uh, the tumor in the superior, superior to the optic nerve is actually regressed, showing a cicatrical lesion. However, the inferior part showed partial regression from April to November after receiving six cycles of chemo and two times of TTT. Unfortunately, uh, roughly around one month after, just uh, 30 days after the last examination, we can notice that the tumor actually uh, got larger and the height was still roughly three to four times the optic diameter for the right eye. The left eye, this is the eye where she received the intraarterial chemotherapy. So from the 6th April to the span of uh, 16 November, she received six cycles of chemo, two times TTT, and showed a, we can really notice the difference we showed quite improvement. And then on this date, uh, 14 December, after the one times of IIC, I think three weeks before the 14 December, the tumor was uh, showing a partial regression. But as we know that sometimes one cycle of IIC is not enough to control the tumor. So the left eye showed response, but the uh, right eye seemed to progress for the tumor. And the patient was planned for additional systemic chemotherapy. This is the video showing the in, sorry. Uh, a video showing the intraarterial malfalan administration. Wait. So uh, for the IAC, she received five milligrams of malfalan. So during the pre and post IAC, this is just to make sure that there was no occlusion after the after the administration of malfalan, uh, no stenosis, no extravasation in the left ophthalmic artery or nearby. So for the second case, this time is a boy, two year old, uh, with a, also a cat, eye, cat eye sign in his left eye since two weeks before admission. You can see the leukocoria is really prominent. The mother tried to beam light both eyes, but only the left eye showed the cat eye sign, according to the mom. Fever was also present that subsided with anti-fever medication. The patient also referred from Padang, the same uh, origin with the first case. He already con uh, performed with USG and CT scan both, but then again, the CT scan conducted with non-contrast CT scan. Uh, we know that the Contrast enhance is actually a preferable method for the CT scan if you want to conduct CT scan. Suspect uh, bilateral retinoblastoma with more prominent intraocular calcification in the left eye. It is similar with the first case. But since this one is a non-contrast uh, modality, uh, we cannot really see the calcification uh, in the CT scan. For the diagnosis, uh, the patient was diagnosed with bilateral retinoblastoma, group B, C of the right eye, and group B of the left eye. So we plan for the white field endoscopy and plus minus uh, LEO or TTT for both eyes. Due to the uh, advanced stage of the left eye, later we uh, I will show the pictures, the patient was planned for the enucleation and dermal fat graft of the left eye. We also plan for systemic chemotherapy and secondary IAC of the right eye. 
These are the images on the first visit, uh, 1st August 2023, the right, the right iPhone discopy. The apex of the tumor was roughly four to five times the optic nerve diameter with macular sparing. For the left eye, we can notice that the tumor is spreading to almost the whole red retina and seem unsalvageable. We can also observe the dilated vessel and then tractional detached retina with vitreous and retinal seeding. That's why the inoculation was actually uh, advised to this patient. For the serial fundoscopy of the left eye, uh, uh, sorry, this, uh, of the right eye, after receiving two cycles of chemo and two times uh, TTT, the tumor showed partial regression. We can uh, see the gross images. And on this date, the patient actually uh, planned for the IAC. So we don't have the follow-up images for the patient uh, after receiving the IAC because it is just, it's just about a week ago. And these are just the video to confirm the uh, process of the intraocular chemotherapy. Hopefully, uh, it can be played in the uh, via this Zoom meeting. Yes, this is the pre-IAC that the vessels are actually patent. After the injection of the malvalan, then we can check again for the diagnostic uh, arteriography. No occlusion, stenosis, no extra position were observed. So we can, uh, we still plan to follow up for this uh, both of the patient up until now. So for the conclusion, chemotherapy remains the mainstay treatment at least uh, for some parts. Obviously, not all. Our patient showed a chemo responsive result, and for IAC, uh, uh, in our clinical setting, primary IAC is not feasible yet because we just newly adapted in 2023 in our center. And for the retinoblastoma in younger age, needs more close monitoring, uh, as you see from the first case, uh, just within 30 days uh, time span, the tumor actually progressed. But thank you for the attention, and I think we can discuss more in the discussion uh, time. Thank you very, thank you very much, Dr. Shafiq Angi, for the interesting case case series. We still have time for a discussion, maybe uh, around ten minutes. Uh, is there any question for Professor Rita Sitorus? or Dr. Yugen Shimoda or Dr. Shafi. Maybe uh, first I will give the opportunity to Dr. Sayaka Kamada as a panelist to give comments or questions about case series of retinoblastoma presented by uh, Dr. Shafi. Please, Dr. Sayaka. Ah, yeah. Thank you for nice me lecture for Professor Rita and Dr. Shafi. Uh, I have one question. Uh, it was a shock to me that many children would die by retoma and leukocoria, uh, the most common reason for disease detection in many cases. Or uh, another symptom is more common. For example, strabismus or something. Um, sorry, doctor. What was the question? Is that uh, the most common sign? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 more. Uh, uh, root career, the most common reason for disease detection, uh, symptom what? coming. Uh, the pa yes. patient first coming are they what what symptom are they yes. have can i can i ask yeah, yeah. the cochlear or strabismus or something yeah thank you dr kamada for the question uh maybe i will mm -hmm. uh help to to answer first and maybe Dr. Estu or Dr. Shafik or Dr. Yu will give additional command if needed. So uh, the answer is yes. The most mm -hmm. common uh, uh, clinical sign of retinoblastoma in our country also leukocoria, white mm -hmm. pupil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
the majority of the retinoblastoma uh, showing the leukocoria if it is still intraocular mm -hmm. maybe i forgot to 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 share also the problem in indonesia is that um there is delay in treatment mm -hmm. delay in treatment and also refusal of the therapy mm -hmm. you know usually if the tumor already uh, in a group e mm -hmm. unilateral so after a, a long consideration we we make decision to inoculate the eyeball mm -hmm. but then the problem is that in our um, patient is the family, the parents and the family will take a long time to discuss it in, a, in an entire family. And then usually they come to the conclusion to reduce the enucleation. Why? Because they are scared of the many things. Because uh, so I have, uh, we have a, a study on that. The reason behind is that because of the cultural or because they care about how if we if the eye was move out so uh, they um, and also cultural and also financially although the financial thing is not the the main problem because most of our people already are covered by the government in so Uh, because also um, influence of the um, herbal or traditional treatment, you know, <laughs> they are more, more more on the on the traditional culture, traditional treatment. They try <laughs> that first, and if that was not successful, and mm -hmm. I become bigger, bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. so they come again to the to our hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, doctor, now I want you to inoculate my eyes, but the staging already increased mm. and the, the treatment already complicated and costly and the poor prognosis and it lead to die. So mm. so that is uh, the problem in most in our country, so, but for that, we um, have a program to educate the patient, mm -hmm. educate, take care, or to uh, to improve the awareness of the family and the society. Mm -hmm. Recording in progress. A uh, sister who had also retinoblastoma. Mm. So, if there is a family history, should I, should we see the girl catch more faster? Uh, <laughs> if they, if you can't, if you could see. The patient, uh, sister, she could, um, find more first. Okay. You mean the screening? The mm -hmm. Screening. Scre yeah, to, screening. To identify the tumor as early mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Doctor, can I ask you? Do you do you perform genetic analysis for the retinoblastoma family, especially familial retinoblastoma? Genetic yeah, yeah. analysis. Yes. On that. Uh, yeah. They are 
we are plan planning to uh, genetic analysis for the brother and sister. Mm. Not not yet, but not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Dr. Estu, Dian Estu, maybe? Dr. Dian Estu or Dr. G, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Sita. And hi, Kamanda Sensei, nice to meet you again. Um, ah, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I just want to add a, a little um, uh, for, for the symptoms in our hospital. Uh, longer times is prototic uh, eye is common, but now uh, I think strabismus is also common uh, in in uh, our hospital because uh, the parents has now are more aware about the uh, strabismus condition of the of the child or maybe the parents now uh, have a higher education so now they will uh, ask the or they will bring the children uh, earlier to the to the hospital that's why uh, uh, our hospital now expand the intraocular chemotherapy for the or intraarterial or intravitreal chemotherapy for the for the children mm -hmm. and also for uh, i think for the screening of the uh, retinoblastoma yes uh, if the brother or the sister of the siblings if uh, have uh, has retinoblastoma or not uh, or do not perform or do not show sign of retinoblastoma we should uh, perform uh, the screening uh, as soon as possible um, maybe we could perform the um, examination under ex uh, examination under anesthesia maybe with white white field from the scapi or maybe with uh, maybe it's common in uh, with the red cam in uh, anesthesia uh, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. That's all I think uh, for uh, uh, comment uh, Dr. Sita for uh, Dr. Kamada uh, questions. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dian mm -hmm. Estu. Maybe we have uh, one question from our resident, Dr. Irma Suandi. Uh, she has two questions. The first question is for Dr. Shafiq. In bilateral cases, is it possible to treat the patient with primary intraarterial chemotherapy instead of uh, secondary? Uh, please, Dr. Chaffee. Mm, thank you, Dr. Irma, for the question uh, regarding the IAC and which group, uh, whether it is bilateral or unilateral retinoblastoma, uh, which one should be treated, whether it's the systemic or the IAC? Uh, as far as I know, according to the guidelines, the recommended primary chemo is uh, systemic chemotherapy rather than IAD due to the hereditary features of bilateral retinoblastoma. In some studies, uh, if I'm not mistaken, systemic chemo might offer greater protection towards metastatic rate compared to the IAC, but further, further experiments or further trials are actually required to back up the, the idea. And for the additional info in our center, currently uh, it is still not feasible to do the primary IAC because we just adapted the IAC in this year. Uh, and that would need a lot of uh, issues to be covered, such as the national insurance coverage. Uh, and then, but uh, back again to the question, uh, is it possible? But uh, as far as I know, according to the guideline, the recommended uh, it's still the primary, uh, the recommended uh, chemotherapy is the systemic chemotherapy. But uh, yesterday I read a journal actually by Abramson from the United States, one of the pioneers in retinoblastoma. He had previously treated his patients by retinoblastoma with um, tandem IAC, which means that uh, at the same time, he administ administered malphalan both to the right and left eye. And I think it is quite advanced treatment, uh, but in Indonesia, from uh, from uh, from from our center, uh, we're still learning more to the retinal blastoma. Uh, and uh, I think that's all from me. If there is additional information, please add more uh, professors, doctors. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Shafiq. Maybe any comments from Doctor G or Professor Rita? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sita. Okay. I, I, I just want to give uh, uh, an information 
uh, the program uh, for uh, early detection of uh, leukocoria, especially for retinoblastoma. retinoblastoma. Uh, we have uh, some collaborative uh, program with Child Cancer Foundation yeah, uh, to do uh, education uh, program and also uh, to train a general practitioner uh, to uh, use uh, how to using ophthalmoscope direct ophthalmoscope in uh, detection of uh, leukocoria by uh, red reflex test. Uh, we hope from uh, that program uh, we can uh, find a uh, leukocoria case uh, with any uh, cause, especially retinoblastoma, uh, to 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 increase the, the the life survival rate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Julie. So the key is uh, early detection, yeah, Doc. Okay, and the second, thank you very much, Dr. Julie. Uh, yeah, please, Prophet, Profita. I have uh, maybe to um to add some comments on what Dr. Shafiq already replied uh, about the um, IEC in bilateral cases or unilateral cases. And so. Uh, is that in bilateral should be primary or secondary? Is that the question? Is that the question, yeah, Dr. Safik? So we have to know that the, 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 the concept of IAC and chemo, intra, intravenous chemotherapy is quite different because the IAC, uh, the priority, the aim is to have a, a localized, um, localized um, chemotherapy and not spread to the systemic. So um, in case of bilateral, we know that bilateral cases, bilateral retinoblastoma tumor originated, hereditary originated, means that the RB1 gene is already in a systemic. So we have to put in the venous chemotherapy in bilateral case, in hereditary case. How about IAC? IAC could be, could be done as primarily or secondary, usually secondary. But the important is we have to also put or give or perform the intravenous chemotherapy. So um, maybe this is the, uh, the concept of treating uh, retinoblast bilateral retinoblastoma. And what we expect from IAC, what we expect from the intravenous uh, chemotherapy. Hope it will answer the question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Rita. And uh, we still have a second question for Dr. Shimoda and Dr. Kamada from Dr. Irma. Uh, what is the current incidence of retinoblastoma in Japan? Is intraarterial chemotherapy the current main therapy in Japan? If yes, what about the side effects of intra-arterial chemotherapy? Is there also an incidence of ptosis or cranial nerve palsy after uh, IAC therapy? Uh, thank you for, yeah. for the question. Uh, the incident is about one in 20,000 20, or 1,000. Uh, 10,000 people, maybe. Although IAC has not yet become a standard treatment in Japan, the Tokyo Center uh, Cancer Center is working on it. So if the tumor is small in size, the patient is referred there. And if indicated, the treatment is performed in Tokyo. But we have no experience with IAC, so we do not know the side effects of IAC, sorry. And if the tumor is already large and already seeded, spread it, uh, it is not indicated. So we will perform the rejection, uh, nucleation at our hospital. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sayaka, um, and we have we still have one more question from our resident, Dr. Anandi. Um, 
I have a question. Knowing that intraarterial chemotherapy is a new modality in Indonesia, how would you explain IC to the parents, to the parents? What are the important keys we need to inform the parents? Uh, maybe Dr. Dian Esto can help to answer the question. Or Dr. Shafi? you want to try to answer the question? Yes, um, thank you, moderator, for the opportunity. So according to the question, uh, yes, it is relatively new modality in Indonesia. And how would you explain IIC to the parents? Well, actually, uh, the first thing, the main principle, it is also considered as a chemotherapy. So when we say chemotherapy, we, 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 we already, you know, hoping for the... Uh, numerous side effects mostly uh, become nauseous and then uh, might uh, might affecting the main phys main physical condition of the of the kids. But then when we try to offer this new uh, relatively new method compared to the systemic uh, in, uh, chemotherapy, we also uh, adding suggestion that uh, hopefully with this kind of method because we delivered locally direct to the eye via the ophthalmic artery hopefully there will be less side effects compared to the systemic chemotherapy because as i have uh, previously previewed in the first case from the girl uh, suffering from retinoblastoma out of six cycles from the systemic chemotherapy she suffered uh, two hospitalization one of them she got sepsis uh, but then we also have to be careful with these side effects because because it could be different uh, or distinct from the systemic chemotherapy, such as the eye might might get small, swollen, and the worst part, I think, uh, become the stroke, uh, the incidence of stroke. So we really have to educate the patient clearly, although we hope for the less systemic side effects, but we surely have to inform the worst uh, that can happen. And then uh, same with the systemic chemotherapy, the appliance of the IAC uh, one time is usually not enough. According to the literature that, that I read, usually uh, it needs around three cycles. So we have to educate again the patients that uh, uh, one round is not uh, not sufficient. So hopefully in the future, we will uh, perform again the IAC. Uh, I think uh, for me, uh, that's all. Hopefully, there is something to add from the social person. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shafi. Yeah. Uh, is there any comment? Yeah, thank you, Maybe you Yeah, you are you are one of our great president then um, in in replying and answering the question. Very good. So I just need to have um to to give uh, additional legal comment is that. Uh, the IAC is not a procedure without side effect. The side effect ranging from mild, only flashing on the forehead, the vascular forehead, and then but the severe one is that cardio, uh, no, cerebrovascular abnormalities, stroke. The, the patient could uh, die because of stroke or severe stroke. So, uh, so that's why um we have to be very selective in giving the IAC for RB patient, not to all patients, but very selective for uh, selective patients. What is the what is the, the the suitable patient for that? One is that if the tumor located in a juxta papillaries, close or nearby the papal uh, optic nerve. Or in the macular, of course, we cannot give um, put a laser for this case for the for this tumor kind of tumor, right? And the second is that uh, um, in if there is a vitreous seeding or retinal seeds in the in in the eye, so that also indication for IAC or the tumor was. Um, not responsible well with other therapy. And we have to uh, keep the eyeball, the globe there. 
For instance, in bilateral tumor, one I already inoculated, and the second is very advanced, and we want to, we, we do not like to, to inoculate the eyeball, the both, the both eye. So we can preserve and the eyeball, the contralateral um, eye, and we're using the IAC. We try to put the IAC. So um, my point is that give the IAC in very selected cases, not to all. Okay. Clear indication. And of course, as uh, Dr. Um, Kamada already mentioned, not give the IAC in extraocular or metastatic tumor. That's not, not help. It's not the indication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Rita. Uh, is there any question from Dr. Julie or Dr. Estu for uh, Dr. Yugen? Uh, do you have any comments or questions about three cases of leukocoria presented by Dr. Yugen? Maybe this is the last question. Uh, may I ask Dr. Sita for Dr. Uh... Dr. Yugen Shimoda? Yes, please. Maybe for the Afaki case after the cataract surgery, what uh, uh, what is the time or the ideal time for the secondary implantation for the children? Do you have any plan further for the secondary implantation of the IOL for the for the child for the child? Dr. Yudin or Dr. Sayaka? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in that case, we we're not uh, planning to the secondary IOL implantation, but uh, someday we will want to plan. Uh, in in Jakarta, when is the timing of secondary IOL implantation of after? After the cataract surgery, uh, usually we do perform the uh, scan the eye implantation as old. Three, three years old. Two, two, two years old. Two, two years old. Or mm -hmm. except for unilateral T, yeah. Mm -hmm. What what is the target of the IOL at three? Oh, okay. Uh, Odd. Yeah, we use uh, usually we use uh, the rule of seven here. We have, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the rule of seven for the for the measuring mm -hmm. uh, the IOL calculation for the children for uh, in terms of uh, secondary IOL implantation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the rule of seven. Rule of seven. Oh. Uh, what? Can you can you explain more the rule of seven? Oh. Uh, uh, the rule of seven is um, the calculation of the the age of the uh, the uh, the reflection target. I mean, like if the the page the P and plus uh, uh, plus four. So the plus four. Oh, yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It close, it close to the, seven. Um, I become to the myopic shift. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Uh, so the, the 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 summary of the age and the target of reflection is equals mm -hmm. to seven. Okay. So I, 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 yeah, I, I, thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Maybe uh one consideration of uh, IOL secondary IOL implantation in children. Uh, mm -hmm. It's depend on also depend on the uh, compliance of wearing glasses uh, from the children. As long as the child uh, still uh, the compliance is still good uh, for wearing glasses, uh, sometimes I I will let uh, them to uh, not uh, to offer uh, IOL implantation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also. A microcornea is one of the contraindication to put uh, IOL if there is a microcornea. Yeah, uh, it's very the difficult. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we use a uh, hard contact lens to that that case or some some cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my very yes. in Indonesia, Doctor Kamada, uh, hard contact lens 
uh, to treat the seed, uh, the aphakic plants mm -hmm. in, in children. Mm -hmm. Expensive. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, I I want to ask you about your experience about uh, unilateral cataract affected in uh, unilateral affected post uh, cataract surgery. Uh, mm -hmm. How how could you did your uh, visual re rehabilitation for ch uh, that uh, child? Uh, yeah, mm. because uh, it is difficult to to yes, do yes. Uh, eye patch, uh, giving eye patch or doing occlusion therapy mm. uh, for the child. Yeah, How yes. it's very difficult. But uh, I told their parents to uh, six hours per day in infantile mm. period, mm. but. Even if they can six hours per day uh, correctly, but uh, it's difficult to develop the unilateral eye mm. op op opacity and op optical visual acuity development is difficult. How long is uh, good for do you think how long is good for the unilateral cataract surgery after the patient? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. in in our patient, uh, we try mm -hmm. from short time yeah to do the eye uh, patch eye patching eye patching uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, from maybe half hour if half hour uh, the compliance is good increase to one hour until two hours yeah mm -hmm. because we have to. To to uh, think about the uh, amblyogenic factor, uh, amblyogenic uh, in refer reverse amblyogenic uh, in 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 fellow eye, yeah, in good eye, mm -hmm. yeah. If if uh, we do the uh, occlusion therapy too long, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe Prof Rita can add. No, no, I don't have any additional comment, but. Uh, I wonder. Uh, I want to ask: Do you have a cataract due to the rubella? Ru cataract rubella, rubella cataract. You know, rubella cataract. Rubella cataract. Rubella cataract. Is that still exist in Japan? Fushin Fushin Hakuna. Rubella cataract. Fushin Hakuna. Fushin. Rubella cataract. Ah, uh, we we have, but uh, I I don't have the patient. Uh, okay. You have mm. so, <laughs> prevalence very low in Japan. <laughs> very low, so mm. at the pregnancy, so screening mm. is all the mm. So that all we have no experience of rubella mm. mm. okay. cataract. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so sorry because of time we must uh, end our discussion. Uh, actually, the discussion is very interesting. Maybe some pros that we have learned from this meeting are early detection, immediate diagnosis, and appropriate management of leukocoria are mandatory, as most conditions are vision threatening and retinoblastoma is life threatening. And some of the differential diagnosis of leukocoria are congenital cataract, uh, retinoblastoma, uh, PHPV, and FEVR. And collaboration among multidisciplinary experts is mandatory in manage, managing retinoblastoma patients and enucleation. To Dr. Sayaka Kamada, Dr. Yugen Shimoda, Dr. Shafiq, Professor Rita, Dr. Julie, and Dr. DNS2, as well as all of the participants, and also uh, Professor Sotozono. Uh, our meeting today is the 12th meeting within two years.
Thank you very much for the wonderful collaboration. And I heard good news from Dr. Yulia Aziza that we will continue the collaboration between Universitas Indonesia and Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine for the next two years. Okay, and thank you very much. Yeah. So, so today, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Today yeah, I talked with Yulia Aziza and uh, so okay. I decided to continue. <laughs> thank you very much, Professor Satozuma. And thank you very much. And see you on the next meeting, maybe uh, on February. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.